I should probably issue a disclaimer here. Uh, the title of my video is not meant to encourage the use of large serving trays as a means for disciplining unruly children, okay? All it is is spankin' as in brand spankin' new, and platters as in slang for records or CDs. That's all it means. Don't start with the negative comments, okay? Greetings one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. I guess it's been a while since I've done one of these multiple recent album review grab bag style videos. Uh, I've done them before, but I've, uh, for one thing, I've never had a consistent name for them. I've just called them whatever I decided to call them at the time. So henceforth, this series, loosely, I use the term loosely, will be called Spankin' Platters. Cool name, huh? Yes, Spankin' Platters, as in brand spankin' new music platters, being records or CDs, whatever format they happen to come in. And don't necessarily take the Winter 2020 subtitle as being uh, the frequency that this, this video will come out as. Uh, it will probably be quarterly more often than not, uh, mostly because I can't imagine coming into enough albums, uh, new recent albums, to make this like a monthly or bi-monthly thing. It will probably be quarterly. Spoiler alert, the first album I'll be talking about is Megan Trainer's album, uh, Treat Myself. Okay, I've got a bit of an uh, interesting relationship with this album. Picked it up on a Friday, and I did not have time to listen to it that weekend, but I uh, ripped it to, to MP3 and put it on my uh, iPod to listen to during the work week, as I always do with new albums. And the first three days of that work week were three of the worst days I've had in recent memory. I was in a horrible mood for all three of those days, and the worst thing was it took me forever to figure out why. I kept thinking that, hey, if I listen to this album, it'll lift me out of my mood, uh, you know, especially since I don't know why the heck I was in that kind of a mood. So I listened to it, then I listened to it again, and again, I must have listened to it nine times over that three days. I shouldn't have done that, because it almost made me sick of the album. And I, I did not want that to happen. I do not want that to happen with any album that I listen to. So yeah, that was a mistake, trying to hammer it into my head so repeatedly. I tried to do a Now and Then video last weekend of that, and it just it did not go well. I, I, it was a breeze writing out the notes. I had the notes written out in a couple of hours, which is pretty uh, quick for me. But filming was a monster. I, I sat in front of the camera for two hours, and I didn't get halfway through the video. I kept screwing up. Uh, I was not reading it well. It just it felt like I was phoning it in. I don't know what the heck was going on, and I just abandoned it. I scrapped it and said the hell with it. And to be honest, it kind of discouraged me. Uh, so yeah, waiting a year and a half for the album, and then, you know, and this happens. It treat myself was a victim of bad timing. It's that's that's the crux of it, you know. So and the other problem with which kind of led me to do this to return to this kind of video format is while I was trying to absorb this album, uh, two or three other recently released albums were sitting on my shelf, you know, bottlenecked up, and I hadn't gotten the, hadn't taken the time to listen to them. So I'm wrestling with how in-depth I want to do my album reviews. I mean, I'm not really an analytical person when it comes to the music I listen to. I listen to the music I listen to because I like it. You know, just I, I'm, I'm not trying to dissect and analyze albums. And so... I'm kind of thinking, and this is, you know, again, it, my opinion could change on this, you know, next month I could come out with three now in the videos. I mean, I, I just, the point is, I just don't know. But as, as I sit on the subject now, it's, um, I'm probably going to lean more toward the, this uh, looser talking about albums, just how I feel about them more than how I think about them. But anyway, uh, enough with the prelude here, you guys, uh, I think I've communicated how I feel about all this stuff. So let's just stop stalling and get into the meat of the video here, the four albums, as I said, four recently released albums that I'll be talking about today. Uh, the first one, as I already showed you, is Megan Trainor's third album, Treat Myself. Now, I've been a fan of Megan Trainor since day one. Uh, as soon as she put out her first single, All About That Bass, uh, not only did I appreciate the message of body positivity that the lyrics had, but uh, also the fact that it couched it in a metaphor about music I played right into my wheelhouse, let, let's face it. So yes, as I said, I've been a fan of hers from day one. Uh, and just so you know, the, the Then album I was going to talk about in the Now and Then video, which I abandoned, 
would have been Thank You, her sophomore album, which I, I also really, really enjoy. But anyway, back to the subject of this album in particular, Treat Myself. Uh, it basically has what we've come to expect from every Megan Trainer album thus far. Uh, great pop melodies, very catchy hooks on a lot of these songs, as well as lyrics, uh, very positive lyrics, um, uh, self-affirmation, body positivity, a lot of the really positive messages that a lot of uh, teenagers and even some young adults, huh, even some adults in general, need right now especially. Uh, but yeah, just great, great positive vibes coming forth on a lot of these songs. But she kind of ups the game on this album by making some of the lyrics more personal in nature. I mean, she talks about uh, some of her past struggles with self-image, like uh, working on it and Baby Girl are a couple of examples of that. And uh, uh, relationship woes that she's had in the past, Ashes is a good uh, example of uh, that type of song. Evil Twin is probably my favorite song on the album. It's just very, very catchy. Just one, probably the catchiest song on the album. I really enjoy that one. Another one that really caught my ear was After You, which features A.J. Mitchell in a duet. And his voice just, for some reason, really caught my ear. It's not the best male voice I've ever heard, but uh, I, I'm kind of looking forward to I'm, I'm going to keep an eye out and see what else he comes up with on his own uh, in the future. But uh, yeah, this is just a very, very good album all around. And uh, I actually have the Target Special Edition, which has uh, All the Ways, which was the single off, off of her Love Train EP last year, which I actually... <laughs> never listened to, even though I, I am a Megan Trainer fan, I just never got around to listening to that EP. But uh, this was a very worthy addition to my Megan Trainer discography and uh, my CD collection in general. It's just a very, very excellent album. Uh, it's, yeah, quite possibly her best yet, I'd have to say. So yeah, excellent album. Treat Myself by Megan Trainer. Okay, on to the next album in today's video, and spoiler alert, all three of the rest of these albums I picked up on vinyl. So yeah, told you, times are changing. Anyway, the next album I'll be talking about is Never Not Together, the new album by Not A Surf. Now, uh, Not A Surf is a band that I've had a bit of a complicated uh, history with, an inconsistent his history, I guess you'd probably say. My first exposure to them was they did a song for Volume 2 of the One Tree Hill TV soundtrack series. It's a song called Always Love, and I really enjoyed it, and I picked up the album that it was, that it was on, and I thought the album was okay. It wasn't the rest of it wasn't quite my thing, so I eventually got rid of it, and then fast forward, what's this been, 15 years later probably, close to 15 years, uh, I decided to give them another try thanks to the dollar CD section in at uh, Epic Seconds, which is a store in downtown Eugene. I actually picked up three of their albums uh, that way on the dollar CD section, and one of, one of them was the album that that song was on that I had picked up years ago but gotten rid of. And this was yet another example of bands or artists that I'd tried years ago, couldn't get into, and returned to recently, and they clicked. And so I decided to pick up their newest album, uh, Never Not Together. These guys pleasantly surprised me. For some reason, and I don't know why, it's just I expect to like each of their albums, and I end up liking them quite a bit more than I expected to. So that's what I mean by when I say they surprise me. And yeah, this is a this is an excellent album, uh, a worthy addition to their discography and to my vinyl collection, I must add. Uh, yes, this is just... A lot of these songs are just the good, straightforward, basic kind of indie pop rock stuff that I like. Uh, that might sound boring, but it's not. It's just, you know, there's something to be said with not tricking out your music, not not making it ornate with really, really deep lyrics or really complex arrangements. There's just something about that classic pop rock stuff that's, you know, it's, it's why it's been popular for decades. And Not A Surf do it just about as well as anybody out there. And this, as I said, this is a fantastic album. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, Come Get Me, which is track two. And that is a perfect example of, as I said, that straightforward, basic, uh, you know, timeless pop rock arrangement with, with great vocals. Um, Live, Learn, and Forget is another, uh, that's the track right after Come Get Me, and it's great. And these guys, this is where the lyrics come in. I mean, these guys write great lyrics. Uh, on, it's got the lyric sheet on a separate sheet inside the fold here. Every age we've ever been, we carry on our backs. That's an example of the kind of lyrics these guys come up with. And that's kind of a message of, the overriding message of the album is where you've been, where you're at, and where you're going are kind of the overriding themes of this of this music, and it's just great. Matilda is a song on side B that really caught my ear. It's uh, It doesn't show the track times, but that's a really long song. It starts out in kind of, you know, the a classic... It's almost like a Simon and Garfunkel type arrangement, more of a folky kind of thing. 
and then it switches gears uh, midway through the song into a deeper kind of a a more uh, drum heavy bass heavy kind of a brooding almost I guess you'd say uh, indie rock kind of arrangement I mean these guys just kind of you know they have several different different gears and they go through them all you know perfectly uh, wonderfully and check out the gatefold in this cool gatefold picture if I can aim it at the camera properly that's just great and uh, yeah but this album is just this is a winner it's fantastic it's uh I mean it's it's only February but this is there are gonna be have to be some really really good albums to knock this out of my top three by the end of this year honestly that it's it's this good so yeah if you like good old guitar bass and drums and I don't know if they have any keyboards at all in here I, I'll have to re-listen to it to uh, determine if they really have any keyboards at all but but yeah just you know great timeless music as I said several times and don't want to run the risk of sounding like a, a broken record uh, but yeah give these guys a try not a surf never not together their new album is fantastic okay the next album up in today's agenda is I have a feeling it's probably the one that most of you who clicked into this video have been waiting for it is Ordinary Man the latest album by Ozzy Osbourne and I will confess this is the first Ozzy studio album that I've ever picked up I do have and I've had for quite a while his essential two disc uh, hits collection which I've enjoyed for a long time uh, I've always been uh, I've always appreciated his singles and I've just never gotten around to picking up any of his albums and I do have uh, Sabbath Bloody Sabbath by Black Sabbath I have that on vinyl I reviewed that in a Backtracks uh, video last year or the year before I can't remember which but uh, but yeah other than those this is the first Aussie studio album that I've ever ever picked up and I will admit that uh, the selling points on this for me were the appearances of Elton John and to a lesser degree Post Malone and I have to say this album did not disappoint at all uh, as you would expect from a man of Ozzy's age and of his uh, uh, di recent diagnosis of Parkinson's disease and other recent health issues the lyrics on this album deal a lot with mortality you know looking back on his life and looking at how much of his life he has left and of course you know what might become of him after his life is over so yeah the lyrics are very very poignant very well written in a lot of the songs uh, pretty much all the songs I mean just great lyrics and uh, all my life is one of the songs that caught my ear uh, pretty much right off the bat uh, ordinary man is another one that's the uh, the duet with Elton John it's a great uh, great song and uh, he comes up uh, with uh, some of his, well, I was about to reference his cheeky sense of humor. And you see the uh, back cover picture here. Uh, one of the, uh, the first track on side B is called Eat Me. And yes, it deals with basically, it, it goes through the entire list of metaphors of, you know, uh, basic cultural definition of eat me as an insult. Kind of, uh, you know, it kind of plays off of that and goes toward. This just a great, great example, a classic example of his sense of humor. It's just, you know, it's in as great a shape as it ever was, and so is his voice. I mean, his voice is just as perfect, as great as it ever as it's ever been. Uh, Scary little green men. That one, uh, to me anyway, it had a couple of connotations, uh, not just about you know possibly seeing aliens, uh, you know, from Mars or whatever, in his imagination, aliens that might not necessarily really be there. Or also, you know, uh, there could be a metaphor for uh, Big Brother, you know, uh, electronic surveillance in its various forms, kind of watching you. So it could have a lot of different connotations with the lyrics. That was one of the songs that I, I really appreciated uh, right off the bat. Um, probably the most disappointing song would be, sorry to say it, is the duet with Post Malone, It's a Raid. It was very different from the rest of the album. It's at a very fast pace, a much faster pace, so it's kind of like uh, in, in the vein of thrash metal basically so it's a combination of thrash metal and new metal I guess I don't know if that's what they still call it the metal that has kind of a uh, rapping and screaming in the lyrics more than singing so that was another thing that kind of turned me off is that's where I draw the line is screaming the lyrics is just it's just not my thing and it had quite a bit of profanity in it to the f-word is there in there quite liberally so uh, Garrett you probably would not like that song uh, but otherwise the album is excellent it's fantastic uh, it's probably going to be in my top 10 uh, even though yes again it's still just February it's too early to tell but uh, yeah I was not disappointed at all in this album slightly disappointed with it's a raid but otherwise yeah very 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 good album and it's uh, making me think about picking up some of his previous albums so yeah uh, Ozzy Osbourne Ordinary Man uh, I'd say go listen to it if you haven't yet good album and as for the last album in today's video, what would be a more natural segue from hard rock, heavy metal, Prince of Darkness, than into jazz ukulele?
why not, right? Uh, Jake Shimabukuro is the final album in today's video. His new album, Trio, and it is fantastic. Now, when I say ukulele, you take all the perceptions that you have of that instrument, wrap them up, and throw them out the window. Well, not this window, because you'd have to come to my house to throw it out this window, but, you know, whatever window you have nearest to you. But yes, this is just... I was expecting something completely different. Uh, well, for one thing, I should have known if I looked at the uh, uh, credits down here. Jake Shimabukuro plays uh, the ukulele, acoustic and electric, tenor and baritone. I never knew they had um, electric ukuleles, let alone different, uh, you know, different registers. So, you know, that right there should have clued me into what a diverse and interesting listen this album would be. Uh, it's all instrumental except for one track. And it's just, I mean, this is, if you like good instrumental stuff that's a little bit unusual, this is kind of, it's actually kind of borders between folk and rock, in a way. And you, what uh, is probably ukulele on a lot of the songs, you, pr you pr pretty much couldn't tell that it's ukulele. You know, that's how different it sounds. I mean, he does take a couple of songs and do the traditional, you know, traditional ukulele that you see uh, in probably inaccurate representations. Uh, but yeah, as for the rest of it, it's a very, very diverse listen, a very interesting album. And he has uh, Nolan, Werner, and Dave Preston uh, as uh, rounding out the trio on this album. And it's just a fantastic thing. There's everything from uh, a real rock-sounding number, which is the opening track, When the Masks Come Down. That's just fantastic. And uh, also he goes uh, has some very, very great acoustic ballads. Uh, a couple of them on side B, uh, Fireflies on side B, and oh, actually the other one is, I think, Lament on side A, are very, very wonderful, cozy, uh, tender acoustic ballads. And there's even a song with a Latin feel, Red Crystal, that's on side A. That's just a great Latin flavored track. I mean, this album is very diverse. Uh, you know, I've, I've had a couple of, I actually have a few Jake albums uh, uh, otherwise uh, in my CD collection. Uh, Grand Ukulele is one of his more recent studio albums, and actually I got this one from my boss at work. Uh, he and his wife went to Hawaii one year, and uh, he knows I like music, so he brought this home uh, he, back as a gift for me, and it was very much appreciated. And back at the beginning of my channel, I did a video about Japanese edition CDs, and I showed this one. This is a two-disc uh, anniversary collection of his greatest hits. Uh, it's just great stuff. I mean, as I said, when you think ukulele, just disregard everything you think about ukulele. I mean, this guy is just a virtuoso of that instrument, and it would kind of stand to reason, honestly, if, you know, if you've got an instrument like the ukulele, and you've got a career that's spanned 15, close to 20 years now, you're gonna, you've got to do something to change it up from album to album, right? Which would, you know, would make perfect sense. So, uh, yeah, this is just a, a fantastic album. I, I honestly got this album kind of on an impulse. Uh, I mean, I... As I said, I know, I've, I've known about Jake Shimabukuro for years, and I've had a few of his albums. I've, I've got one other uh, that I didn't show you here. And yes, just, but so, so I kind of knew that he was a, a very good artist at what he does, but this just totally took me by surprise. It's just a fantastic album. A uh, very, very diverse array of sounds, as I said. So yeah, if you're willing to, you know, stretch your comfort zone as far as listening and check out some instrumental stuff, uh, which ranges, as I said, everything from folk to rock is on this album, and, and Latin stuff too. Uh, check out Trio by Jake Shimabukuro. Just a wonderful, excellent album. And that does it for today's Spankin' Platters. I feel good about this video, a, a lot better than I felt about the now and then video I tried to do last week, so let me know what you guys think about this more casual approach to albums. You know, I don't go into as much detail as I usually as I would on another kind of uh, review video, but I hope that I've enticed you into possibly checking out this stuff. Uh, you know, and as always, let me know if there are ways that I can maybe improve, uh, uh, elaborate on other things, you know, just, hey, fire away with the feedback, honestly. But anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.